Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to our Halloween special. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone hear that? Or was that just me? Um, anyway, it's Halloween and uh, unfortunately I did do a big Halloween special live thing uh, but it was three or four days ago now uh, because as of the time you're watching this I'm hopefully in Scotland. I say hopefully because there has been a wee fly in the ointment but fingers crossed it's not an issue and uh, we can ignore this entire segment, but uh, if it's not, then maybe we'll do a second Halloween live today if the last one didn't. Anyway, but anyway, today we're here to talk about the unofficial beer of Halloween and the unofficial beer of Halloween's big brother, Hobgoblin, King Goblin, Witchwood Brewery. Um, I'll be honest, I said it in a previous video, but I've been very disappointed with the lack of proper Halloween beers this year in the supermarket stuff. So there is basically nothing, uh, possibly one uh, from... Robinson's Trooper I Made in the Collab thing, uh, which I, all being well, will drink on the live that I've not done yet, but it's in the past for you, so I'm getting mentally quite confused. Uh, but anyway, I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I wasn't waiting till Halloween, but Halloween came around and I thought, you know what, I've been meaning to do that video. Basically, Hobgoblin is, in essence, the reason I love beer, right? I know it's not that great anymore, but once upon a time, this was an absolute gem. Um, and a lot of people really rave about King Goblin. Now, I'm not sure if it's changed or not, but I always used to think it kind of you couldn't improve on the original by just making it boozier, basically. Uh, but I suspect things have changed. I reckon this has probably weakened off a bit. But I reckon if this has weakened off a bit too, then maybe, maybe they're onto a winner. So I want to try them back to back, full review, two whole beers, Halloween special. Yeah, let's get on with it. So, needs no introduction really, from Witchwood Brewery, Hobgoblin, Ruby Beer, 5.2%. Uh, I know that ABV is fluctuated depending on bottle, cask, whatever. Uh, from memory, it's always slightly stronger in the bottle. Are you going to focus for me there? No, of course you're not. Why would you? Come on, Hobgoblin. Stop playing tricks with me. Finally, there we go. Uh, the artwork, let's be honest, not what it used to be on this beer. It used to be much more interesting. They kind of modernised it um, and... Well, hey ho, a uh, little bit of an interesting fact for you there. The old logo used to have uh, two of these stars that you now see on the top, one on each side of the kind of the crest. Um, and the reason for that is an interesting one. I got told this when I went to the Witchwood Brewery quite a few years ago now. And uh, basically, that was that when they started shipping this over to the US when they got quite popular, um, the US market said they weren't allowed to ship uh, their beer over with images of graphical violence and what they meant by that was that the uh, hobgoblin dude here as you can see with his axe uh, he used to have blood on his axe and they weren't happy about that uh, so in response what Witchwood did was uh, they removed the blood from the axe as per their request and then they put two Soviet stars one either side just as a little bit of a yeah so I quite like that little story uh, but yes let's get this one open I do have the proper glassware today for these. I have a Hobgoblin glass and a Witchwood uh, Beers of Flavour glass that I obtained on that same trip to Witchwood Brewery many years ago now. These remain some of my favourite glasses, to be honest. They're just, they're just nice. They're just nice. Um, so, lots of smoke off the bottle on that one. Nice and creepy. Um, so... Ruby beer, this one. You don't get that many rubies, but this one has stayed pretty strong contender forever. Very dark, but red coming through the whole thing. Off white head, good looking head on it. Let's be honest, that's a good looking pint, isn't it? Let's uh, pop the rest in. Chuck some more beer mats down. Right then, aromas. It's got such an iconic smell, this beer. I mean, it's it's got a bit of the, what you call, fuggy, farty, best bitter aroma, but there's some sweetness in there, some caramel notes. I don't know what hops are using there, but there's that quintessential, low-key, slightly floral, slightly green hop vibe to it. Yeah, I mean, this is just memories for me. Let's get into it. Cheers. 
Unhappy Halloween. Whoa. Sweet, toasty. Metallic Edge. Proper British ale, I think is fair to say on that one. I'm sure it's not what it used to be, but actually, that's one of the best pints I've had of that for a while. That's, um, yeah, that's good. So, before we crack into the king, quick top to bottom taste test on this one. Initially, tiny bit sweet, tiny bit bitter at the front of the tongue. Mild carbonation. Very dry, slightly bitter, but quite drying over that kind of first part of the tongue. Next phase, some of that metallic -y taste starts to come through just, just a touch and um, the dryness goes. It's very quite refreshing actually as it gets towards the back of the tongue. On the swallow, that's where the flavour really just comes into its own. Treacle, sweetness, some earthy notes in there. The hop's not very strong but there is a little bit of a slightly green finish on it. And the aftertaste is... Well, it's quite best bittery, to be honest, the aftertaste. Um, but that's why I like it so much. Really, I know everyone's going to say, oh, it's not good anymore, but I actually like it. I just do. It just ticks boxes for me. So, on to the king. Now then, am I hearing things? What's going on? Right. Um, so, King Goblin, hopefully this one will focus with ease. Uh, King Goblin, 6.6% ruby beer, so it's just an amped up version of this, 1.4% stronger, and uh, there is the King's face, there you go, nice little gauntlet, right then, let's open it up, still some smoke on the bottom, but not as much as the uh, regular, has to be said. Not as thick a head on this one, and actually, the original's slightly darker. It is. It's absolutely, I mean, these glasses are the same, basically. Slightly different artwork on them, but they're effectively the same glass, and... Wow. That is unexpected. The King is actually a slightly lighter colour, which I really wasn't expecting. On the nose... It's deeper. It's got less of that bitterness. It's got less of the earthy, greeny notes. It's much more... It's got a barrel aged quality to it. It's definitely not barrel aged, don't get me wrong, but it's got that slightly deep, slightly more kind of, yeah, resinous, boozy note. I mean, it's 6.6, .6. it's strong, but it's not silly. I mean, struggling to get a whole lot of detailed aromas out of this compared to the original, so uh, let's get straight into it. Cheers, and once again, happy Halloween. That's interesting. That's got to have changed. That must have, must have changed. I mean, I think you can see there how much lighter the King is compared to the original. I mean, there's nothing different behind them, really. And if I cover that side, it's still, yeah, absolutely. I wasn't expecting that. Both through be the, I mean, the King's, I, I know the King has changed. There's no way that's the same recipe it used to be. Because I used to think it was just a bit over the top. And now, well, actually, in some ways, there's slightly less flavour in it than the original. Um, it's certainly stronger, but... It's slightly more warming, but it doesn't have the breadth. It certainly doesn't have the breadth of the original. So before we start doing proper side-to-side -side comparisons, quick top-to-bottom taste test of the King Goblin then. Initially, sweet, not bitter on the front of the tongue, really mild carbonation. And you can tell instantly there's a bit of a boozy kick to it. It's straight there, just tickling the front of the tongue. Next phrase, to be honest, is pretty flat. It's kind of the same continuation, but there's no real... Elements sticking out in that second phase. Third part, you do start to get a bit more flavour. It's more bonfire toffee. It's very sweet, but it's still, it's still not very varied. It's quite linear. This beer. It's really not got all that much going on. And then through the swallow and the aftertaste, it's kind of just the same thing. It's nice. Don't get me wrong. It's very. It's a winter warmer. It's got some sweet vibes in there. Very autumnal feeling. But it doesn't go up and down at all there's no real change in the flavor and see i'm being i think over critical if i had that in a pub the old the ultimate test if i had this in a pub i didn't know what it was someone had bought it for me i had it and i'd gone oh yeah i'd have gone yes that's a bit of me that is because to be honest most times when i get stuff in pubs unless i know where i'm going for a specific beer or type of beer 
I'm normally that disappointed, truth be told. This is not disappointing, it's just a little bit linear, especially when it's meant to be the amped up version of this. He doesn't quite get it. So, good friend of the channel, fellow Nottingham beerista, Raggy's Wine, Beers and Spirits reviews, I believe is the full name of his channel. But if you search for Raggy on YouTube, you'll find him. The man's a legend. And I remember him talking about these beers once and said that what you really want to do is have one of each and drink them side by side, which is the whole reason I want to do this review. Because he reckons that basically this has got the body, which it probably has, to be fair. It's a bit thicker, a bit more looks, but this has probably got a bit more dynamic range I guess was the point he was trying to make and if that is the point he was trying to make then absolutely I agree. Um, so I kind of half considered mixing these together to see what it come out like. Shall we do it? Shall we mix it? Yeah let's, let's do it. So nice wide open beer glass. Uh, I'm thinking about half and half so I'm just gonna top a little bit in there, top a little bit in there. I'm only talking about you know, a quarter of a pint, maybe a bit less. This is half and half, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna let those mix, those flavors mix together for a minute. Gonna do a quick side by side now. So, the original, just on the aroma, when you've been drinking that, you come back to this, it's so much more fresh, there's a nuttiness to it, it's just really quite bright. Wow, so much, and then, I'm seeing what he means. This, the original can be a bit spiky, is what I'll say. There's quite a lot of fluctuations in flavor, which means you could, if you're not quite in the mood, get a bit like, oh, this is starting to grate a bit. This, on the other hand, is very actually easy to drink. I used to be quite against it, but they're saying it's got to have changed because it's so, it's just so linear in its in its in its flavour profile. I don't know if they're meant to be the same beer anymore, but they don't feel like it. I mean, they're both called Ruby now. The King didn't used to be called Ruby Beer, as I recall. Um, but anyway, we'll have a look on the bottles in a minute. Uh, the, the the Hobgoblin original has better flavour, no doubt about it. The King Goblin has a weirdly easier to drink quality about it now, um, but. What happens if we mix them together? It doesn't smell bad. It doesn't smell bad at all. Got high hopes for this. It is 50-50. I mean, it smells exactly like a mash of the two. Uh, but whilst I'm saying they're violently different, they also share in a very common base. So what witchcraft would be performed this Halloween? That, that is mighty. I'm not even lying, I kind of want to mix the rest of them together. I mean, I don't know what to say about this. Um, which would, if you're watching, can you bring out, what would we call it? Hobgoblin Senior? Prince Goblin? I don't know, but the two mashed together. It's actually good, like I'm not. It seems like a stupid idea, but it's actually really worked. Um, of course, it's not perfect, and I think you could experiment for a long time mixing in different amounts of each to see where you're really at. I reckon a little bit more of the Hobgoblin versus a little bit less of the King Goblin is probably the way to go, but yeah, I mean, well, there you have it. There's not really much else to say. We're gonna take a quick look at the bottles here. Uh, so firstly, the King Goblin Imperial 6.6% Ruby Beer from Witchwood Brewery. The King of Legends, deep ruby in color with aromas of treacle toffee and dried fruit. Brewed with a blend of the finest crystal and chocolate malts and the addition of sovereign hops, packed full of sweet caramel, coffee and earthy roasted malt flavors for a warming seal of approval. Maybe it does taste of all those things, but after drinking this one first, I really wasn't getting a great deal other than just that kind of underlying warming caramel sensation. And then the original Hop Goblin Ruby Beer, 5.2% from, again, Witchwood Brewery, says, think legendary. This distinct Ruby Beer is sweet caramel and fruity aromas tease the taste buds. Brewed with smooth and rich chocolate and crystal malts and a blend of Fuggles and Styria and Golden Hops. I expect a delicious full body toffee flavour and a fruity finish of figs, raisins and dates. Drink legendary. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, 
Yeah, there's nothing more to say. Uh, I would urge you to go buy the bottles, open them at the same time, go back to back, and even mix a little bit together. Let me know what you think, because I wasn't expecting that. I would not even really thought to do that until I was halfway through this video, and I'm so glad I did, because, uh, well, might do it with what I've got left. So uh, I think we'll leave it there. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it if you haven't already subscribed, if you will be so kind, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.